Okay, so let's talk about installing and authorizing a DHCP server. Now, in this video, I'm not going to go through creating DHCP scope. I'm going to do that in another video. But for this video, I do want to show you how we can install and authorize a DHCP server. And we'll take a look at some of the DHCP server options. So I'm going to go to tool, not tools, sorry, manage, add roles and features on my existing server, and I'm gonna choose roller feature-based installation on the server that I'm currently on, and I am going to do DHCP. That pops up, do you wanna add the tools to it? Yes, I do, so I'm gonna click add features, and next. I don't need any of these features here, although I do wanna point out one of them while we're at it, and that is IPAM, the IP address management. IPAM is used to kind of provide a centralized review and management point for DHCP, DNS, and Active Directory across an entire enterprise infrastructure. So in that big enterprise infrastructure, you might have dozens of DHCP servers, dozens of DNS servers, dozens of domain controllers. And the IPAM uh, server feature is to help you manage all of those. So if you're working with a really large enterprise scale network, that might be worth looking into. But in this case, we're working with a fairly small one, so I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm, I'm just going to install my DHCP server. Now, this should be relatively quick, but something as it's uh, installing, something that I need you to be aware of is that DHCP in a Windows environment must be authorized. If it is not authorized, it will not function. Now, this is intended to be a security feature, but what it protects against is somebody accidentally setting up a DHCP server in a Windows Server environment on a system that's part of Active Directory. Um, it does not provide, it does not secure your network against rogue DHCP server attacks at least not intentional ones. It does help protect against somebody accidentally creating a DHCP server or creating a DHCP server without knowing what they're doing and uh, creating a problem with it that way. So what happens when you have a Windows server that is part of an Active Directory network, when it comes up, it's going to have to be authorized. And that will register with Active Directory saying, hey, this is an authorized server. You have to be a domain level admin, at least in order to be able to do this. So you authorize with Active Directory and say, hey, this is a legitimate server for this network. So go ahead and allow it to function. And then you have to create a couple of Active Directory users and groups. And it's all really easy. It happens automatically for us. If we check one option and away it goes. We'll see that here in a few minutes. If you don't, what will happen is when you try to start the DHCP service, it will check with Active Directory to see if it's authorized, and if not, it won't function. Now, only Windows servers play by those rules, and only ones that are part of, Active, part of an Active Directory network. So if you have a Linux server that's set up as a DHCP server, it's not going to play by those rules. It's just going to function. It will not check with Active Directory. If you have a window or DHCP on a Windows standalone server, it won't play by those rules either. So the authorization is intended to be a little bit of a protection. It does not protect against an intentional DHCP server attack. Okay, this is taking a little bit, now that we've talked about that, this is taking a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video real quick, and we will pick it back up when this installation process finishes. Okay, so our DHCP server installation has finished, so I'm going to click close, and then I'm going to come up here to my little notifications area, and right here is my post-deployment configuration. So I'm going to click that link, and it's going to take me to my post-installation wizard. So the following steps will be performed. We'll create a couple of groups here, and we'll authorize the HCP server on the target computer if we're joined to a domain. And we are, so we're going to click Next. And it says, do we want to use our current user credentials? Skip AD authorization. If you do that, then you have to come back and authorize later. Sometimes not a problem if you want to pre-stage some... Uh, DHCP servers or use alternate credentials. These should work. So I'm going to click commit 
And done, done, done. Okay, perfect. Our DHCP server is now authorized. Groups are created. So fairly straightforward process. Now, like I said earlier, we're not going to go through a scope configuration, but I do want to walk you through some DHCP server options. So we're going to go to tools and find DHCP, and this is going to load our DHCP management console. Let's give ourselves a little more room here. So this is going to be a list of all of our DHCP servers that we are aware of, right? So I can right click and add another server. Uh, here is going to be my server itself and then my IPv4 and IPv6 server options, policies, filters. We have no scopes created yet. I can right click and here's where I can add remove bindings. So that's just going to be what addresses are we going to listen for DHCP uh, requests on. It's also where I can unauthorize or if I did have it already or if I skipped the authorization, this is where I would go to authorize my DHCP server. And then properties and database path and backup file path. Okay, so far pretty straightforward. Now. This gives us a DHCP server. It's not functional until we actually create a DHCP scope. And that's what we're going to do in our next video.